Hello everyone, my name is Mad Radio DX, a UK Mic 7 Echo India Whiskey. I want to welcome you to this video where I'm talking about um, passing and how, or how to pass the foundation license um, here in the UK for amateur radios. Now, this is um, this video specifically for the UK. Some might apply, you know, the information that I've got here might apply to other countries, but this is specifically for the foundation license here in the UK itself. Okay, so first question. Is it worth going for the foundation license even if the maximum permitted transmitting power is only 10 watts? The answer is yes it is. I am a foundation license holder and I've done contacts with both uh, voice and digital modes from the UK to North America using only 9 watts of power and a basic antenna. Second question, what is the recommended study material for the foundation license? The answer is by the study books from the RSGB, that's the Radio Society of Great Britain, uh, get it from their website. First, get the foundation license uh, manual, and I'm going to show you here. Go on the website, there you are. That's the foundation license uh, manual. So 100, uh, I 100% recommend this because this is the main study material I use to pass the uh, license, okay? And then you can get the exam secrets for radio amateurs. Again, available on the um, RSGB website. Let me just show you, here it is. And there you are, exam secrets for radio amateurs. It's got uh, practice multiple uh, choice questions um, you know, for studying for the exam, but it also has um, short uh, sections as well um, with, uh, you know, with details, with um, all the uh, all the things you need to learn about, um, you know, for the uh, foundation license. The great thing about this as well, this book, is that you can also use this book for when you want to go for the intermediate um, license and the full license too. But I still recommend um, recommend getting this book as well. Okay, so we go back here. Okay, um, I also recommend the YouTube um, you know the re YouTube video channel from the uh, Cornish Radio Amateur Radio um, Amateur Club Training. Let me just show you here. So this is the um, the channel, the YouTube channel of the Cornish Radio Amateur Club Training. Um, very useful um, videos. Um, covers the topics really well, very well explained. I use this um, channel when some of the um, items that I was studying for uh, on the uh, books from the RSGB, I was finding it a bit difficult to um, to grasp. But then these videos that um, that's been supplied here sort of like clarified, um, you know, the doubts that I was uh, having. So 100% recommended. Um, I'd leave uh, links to all that, the books and that channel in the description below. Um, one thing to be careful is that um, some of the uh, content on uh, this uh, YouTube channel is out of date. Um, so what I recommend is that you first study from the RSGB books and then you look at that YouTube channel. So then you know which stuff is uh, out of date. Third question, is it a good idea to just brain dump for, uh, for the exam as in memorize the answers only to questions? The answer is no, I do not re uh, recommend brain dumps, uh, dumps of any kind, as you will not learn the topics properly. Also, brain dumps I've, uh, I've seen online are either out of date or have incorrect answers. So just stay away from them. Like I said, study from the RSGB books and look at that uh, YouTube channel I've uh, recommended. Question four, I have uh, no or very little radio experience. What should I do? The answer is buy the study books from the uh, from the RSGB website. Also, bl um, book some classroom sessions that caters for the uh, for the foundation license, whether it's online or in person. This will give the practical experience necessary to pass the exam. Question five: How long did it take? Uh, you know, how long did it take me to pass the exam? And the answer is one month study. But I already had years of uh, previous experience and knowledge in radio, and I also knew. Um, some of the things of you know about uh, ham radio even though i never transmitted on the ham bands but i used to transmit for example in the heyday of cb or the uh, citizens band because you didn't need a license uh, back then to transmit um, you know on the cb band and also i knew some of the co uh, topics covered in the foundation license before studying as radio and my you know is my main hobby if you are less experienced then i recommend taking more study time and uh, classroom sessions um, so uh, what it, what it is is that you know like I said it took me one month but there's other people that I've seen they say they've taken three to four months they've passed and that's a good thing because you don't want to rush the exams the last thing you want to do is you know go in with uh, very little study and you fail the exam 
also as well is that um, I've heard you know stories of people um, passing the mock exams and then when they do the real exam they fail why is that because I suppose what they've been trying to do is brain dump um, questions and answers that they've seen that's not a good idea the best way like I said is to study from the books and that YouTube channel that I've recommended. Question six, I'm, uh, I am very experienced in radio, transmitted a lot on CB and know a lot about ham radio. I also took the mock exams on the RSGB website and got a passing score. Um, I think the passing score is something like 74%. Is it really necessarily um, necessary to study for the foundation license? The answer is yes, absolutely. There will be specific information from the syllabus that needs to be learned and the actual exam will be different to the mock exam. I can tell you that I already had one question from the mock exam um, that's available on the RSGB website um, when I did the actual exam. It was differently worded to the one on the mock exam, but it was more or less like it was just more or less the same question and more or less the same answer. But the rest were different, but it certainly wasn't hard. But as long as you study, you will pass the exam. Question seven, I've seen study material and mock exams online for the North American ham license. Is it worth looking at those if you're going for the UK foundation license? The answer is no, because they have different requirements to the UK licenses. Just stick with this, uh, the UK syllabus. Question eight, I've seen um, or rather have trouble studying for this exam because I find it difficult to remember the topics covered. What is the best way to study? The answer is everyone has their own way of studying. My favourite is creating multiple choice questions for, because for me it is the best way to remember what I have studied for. There's no need to remember you know, a whole page of a study book here, like for the foundation licence. Just highlight or write down the most important fact or facts that you noticed and then you can do things like you know, uh, what I would do, turn it into a multiple choice questions, do flashcards and so on. Whatever, you know, just whatever... You, um, uh, is is easier for you to learn and remember um, in future. Question nine, I've seen comments online that the foundation license is for kids and can be passed by eight-year-olds. Is this true? The answer is, look, people talk a lot of rubbish uh, in real life and certainly on the internet as well. No, it cannot be passed blindfolded by an eight-year-old. The foundation license does carry a lot of responsibility once you start transmitting on the air and you must assume it. Examples are health and safety, cable management, what to do in case of an you know electrocution or electric shock and so on. You must assume responsibility of your actions and maintain the safety of others as a foundation license holder. So yeah, it, it, this is not uh, it's certainly not kid stuff. Um, you know, it, you have to be um, how can I say a responsible adult when you are transmitting on the air with a foundation license. And question 10, is it worth passing the foundation license even though ham radio equipment is very expensive these days? And the answer is, these days you no longer need lots of money to buy uh, ham radio equipment. For something like 300 British pounds, you can get a decent setup for voice contacts and digital modes, like for example, FT8. It might not be the best uh, ham radio equipment, but it is enough to uh, get you started. And by the way, I'm referring to more to more to the um, what do you call it, the HF bands, the shortwave bands. Um, when you spend some like 300 uh, British pounds, if you're transmitting on things like the two meter bands, for example, you can spend a lot less uh, money uh, on getting yourself on the air. If, for example, you're only doing voice contacts, and you you can s spend a little bit more if you want to do uh, digital modes like FT8. So those are my 10 quick questions and answers on passing the foundation license uh, here in the UK. If you've got any more uh, questions, then please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and 73s.